Hello and welcome to the Car Care Now channel. Today we're continuing on our series on how Toyota hybrids work. Today we're going to be focusing on the gasoline engine. And we're going to be talking about a few things. This is a short video. There's not much with the gasoline engine. We're not going to talk how the gasoline engine works, but we'll talk about a few things that are different for hybrids. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to it. Check out the rest of this series and my other videos. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And thank you for tuning in for another part of this series. Without further ado, let's dig right into it. So the engine in hybrids, the gasoline engine, it's a, for the most part, it's a conventional good old gasoline engine, runs great, you know, the, the normal stuff. However, there are a few things. It uses an Atkinson cycle, and again, going back with the simple but complicated, we're not gonna go into how uh, the whole thing runs, but the Atkinson cycle benefits are better emissions, or actually less emissions out of the tailpipe, and more efficient. More efficient means more gas mileage, in other words, it consumes less gas at the cost of power. It makes less power per displacement. So your 1.8 liter engine in, an, in a hybrid is gonna make less power because it's Atkinson cycle than say a 1.8 liter engine in another car, gas, regular gasoline car with an auto cycle. It's the same size engine, but it makes less power. Because of that, the reason for that is Remember, this engine has two little friends right next to it. Actually, one friend that really could power this up to a lot more power. Remember the hybrid drivetrain, it boosts this, this engine. It doesn't boost the engine itself, but it boosts the car with that electric power so that you don't need as powerful of an engine because you have that hybrid drive. So their focus when they made this is more on gas, economy and better emissions and the hybrids are all about being green and all this good stuff so few things with this engine like we talked about previously there's no starter it just boom fires up to life because mg1 like we talked about the motor generator that's connected to it it just spins it and it comes right up in the newer ones and the older ones every engine has to have a water pump on the older ones there was a belt water pump Life is good, that, that was very simple. In the newer ones, and starting generally with the third generation Prius, was the first one, I believe, they switched to an electric water pump, and I think it's great, because there is nothing more complicated than the second generation Prius cooling system, and I'll touch briefly on that in a second. But the benefits of the electric water pump is that it could control it on demand. Instead of having coolant circulating when you start the engine when it's cold and that takes forever to warm up the engine, well, this engine starts, water pump is off. There's no coolant circulation. You cannot warm up an engine fast enough if there is zero coolant circulation. So that's the cool thing about this. These engines warm up very rapidly and they can control heat very effectively. And they're very, they're very reliable. You don't really have a lot of problems with them. They don't run as much as other models. As long as you take care of them, they really have no issues. For the most part, they're just good old gasoline engines. Change the oil, do the spark plugs and maintenance, regular maintenance. And uh, the hybrids have some of the most odd uh, service items. Uh, the air filter. Isn't that the cutest air filter in the world? I love how small they are. They always have odd looking air filters. Because of space, they wanna put everything in here and they end up making such a tiny air filter. But uh, yeah, for the most part, they're very reliable. Some people have asked, do they have direct injection? Yes, not this one, not the Prius, but yes, the Highlander Hybrid, before they switched to the four-cylinder, actually the four-cylinder has it too, but they do have direct injection. How well is that gonna work? I don't know, they're too new. I wanna say 17 and up Highlander Hybrid had it, but 
that's that's just the way it is. I think at some point they're gonna switch to the, the awesome D4S system, which has eight injectors and a four cylinder, basically regular injectors and direct, but we're not gonna get into that too much. One more thing we talked about with the inverter, there's no alternator. You notice the gleaming absence of an alternator, which usually sits right here because the inverter takes care of that with a DC-DC converter. Now, there's no drive belt in this guy. You only have a, a little pulley down there. So that's less maintenance. These engines actually have less and less maintenance. There's no starter to go out. There's no alternator to go out. There's no belt to change. Life is good, it seems like. And they run less, so they're not as you know, used as a, a conventional gasoline engine. So that's pretty much it with engines. Let's talk briefly about the heating and air conditioning in hybrid cars. Now, I mentioned earlier that the second generation Prius has possibly the most complicated heating system there ever existed in a car, other than the heat pump on the primes. But let's focus, let's talk briefly about that for a second. So. Because of that engine having a mechanical water pump, it takes forever for it to warm up, according to the hybrid system standards, of course. They used a little storage tank that could hold supposedly hot coolant for up to three days. And that way, when you start the car, it cycles that hot coolant out of that tank and hopefully you have immediate heat and the engine warms up faster. Uh, it was a brilliant idea, but didn't work so brilliantly because usually people complain, oh, I have no heat forever and it takes forever to warm up and the engine runs a lot more to warm up everything and it didn't work very well. And it had a few issues actually. So they wised up and they decided that over engineering, uh, let's leave that for the Germans, will make something that actually works. This is Toyota Land after all. So they when they switched to the electric water pumps that helps the engine warm up much faster but then also they use ptc heaters it's just an electric heater right there in the, in the ac box warms up the air that comes to your face until the engine warms up enough and it can take over from there so that's pretty cool i think that solves the problem it's not when you, you notice in the winter when you turn on the heat in your hybrids there is heat but it's not as strong that's because these ptc heaters they don't do wonders, but they do a good job to get some hot air out until the engine catches up and then you're good to go. Let's talk about the air conditioning. And the air conditioning in hybrids is electric. That's no, the compressor, even though it sits where a normal gasoline compressor sits, but there's no belt connected to it. It's just an electric compressor, has just like we talked about in the inverter, it gets a power wire from the from the inverter. It runs off of that, on and off. Life is good. It's just like the uh, compressor in your uh, refrigerator, if essentially. It's just very simple. One thing about these compressors, though, you know, that you really, really need to know about, and most people miss this, it uses a different kind of oil. If you put the regular standard oil that that comes usually with refrigerant when you go buy from AutoZone, you put it here, it's gonna short out the compressor because that oil is conductive. This is an electric compressor. You cannot have oil that is conductive in this compressor. Otherwise, it's high rate failure immediately. There's a, that, that, I've never really seen a, a, a hybrid compressor go bad on its own like that without having the wrong oil in it and shorting out internally. So that's something you need to know. If you're ever working on servicing these things, even if you're a shop, you need a dedicated machine that has not been contaminated with the wrong kind of oil. That is really the only thing that really goes wrong with these things. And one, one tip on that, if you have the car in like EV mode or it shuts off, like the engine is not running and you, turn, you just turn on the AC, you can actually hear this guy humming just like your refrigerator comes on and it starts humming. It's pretty cool. I, I think it's very efficient. I hope one day we'd see that more on even gasoline cars now that gas, even gasoline cars are going to, gasoline Toyota cars 
are going to electric water pumps. So that sound you just heard, uh, people have described it as a homing sound. Sounds like a very dangerous term, but people have described it as a UFO descending from the sky. I only believe there's one thing that will descend from the sky one day. That's called vehicle proximity alert. That's Toyota's idea of because hybrids are so quiet, because when the engine's not running, it's basically just quiet. That sound you will hear, and it's getting a lot louder in newer cars, especially when you put it in reverse with the engine not on. That is basically to let people around you know that your car is moving. Your basically engine is running, if you would. That kind of, so they would hear it and know that you're backing up or moving forward. It's, it's hilarious. I, I thought, I, when I first heard it, I literally thought, what is, there's something wrong, something is dragging or making a weird noise. But that's what that is, vehicle proximity alert. So if you hear it, and, and the first model that really had it super loud is like the 19 RAV4 hybrid when it first came out. We actually had people bring it back. Hey, my car is making this weird noise when I put it in reverse. Yep, it's normal because it was so loud. As soon as the engine kicks on though, it, it just goes away because now the sound of the engine is there. So I thought I'd add this one here so you would hear it and know what it is. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. Thank you so much for watching all these parts. I hope you learned something new. I hope um, I was able to keep this simple, not confusing and entertaining at the same time. Consider subscribing to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And thank you so much once more for watching this series. May the Lord bless you and keep you and you have a wonderful day.